everybody, Richard again here from Electric Classic Cars and on this week's episode, sponsored by Mauser Electronics, it's time to give you a tour around the Triumph Vitesse. Let's get into it. Now, for those that aren't too familiar with this car, which included me, let's phrase it, um, I thought this was a Triumph Herald when it came in, but nope, it's a Triumph Vitesse. So, this is what I've learned so far in this car. Triumph Herald had the four-cylinder engine in the front, single headlights, the Triumph Vitesse had a straight six, is that right, Tim? Yeah, two litre straight six, I think, with two twin, twin SUs. There you go, you heard it here. Uh, so uh, that's the difference between the Herald and the Vitesse. Now, this is a Mark II Vitesse, which I believe has a, an improved rear suspension setup, because a lot of people uh, on socials, when you put this up, we're saying, oh, the suspension is going to be awful on the back. Well, apparently this has improved suspension on the back because it's a Mark II. How improved? I don't know until I drive it. So, Now, while we're at the front, let's just pop up the bonnet and show you what's underneath here. I'm going to need my glamorous assistant Tim's help here. So, Tim, can you do the clip the other Ta -da. side? You got it? Up she goes. There we go. Now we've opened up the bonnet, you can get a really good idea of the quality of the restoration on this car before it actually came here. So um, Paul Cole from Triumph Auto Classic, take a bow, young man. That's the guy that did the restoration on this. Um, but equally, I do like a clamshell bonnet when it opens because it's got such good access to what used to be the engine bay, obviously and uh, now is the motor and battery bay. So what have we got in the front? Well, uh, essentially we have down there a um, Hyper 9 from NetGain Motors and that is attached to the original transmission. So gearbox there, Hyper 9 motor there and on top we have um, three fifths of the battery pack. So in there is 18 kilowatt hours of battery pack in there on top of the motor and uh, we have the heater here so inside there that's what this orange cable is there we have the electric element for the heater dc to dc converter over here that's the equivalent of your alternator that's taken the high voltage to the low voltage i.e 12 volts to charge up the little dinky 12 volt battery that's underneath here why is that 12 volt battery so little dinky? Because we don't need a big battery to crank over that starter motor and get that engine going. It's only really running the lights and the windscreen wipers. So yeah, battery pack, motor, and other bits and pieces in here, all completely bolted in to the original engine mounts and any other mounts that we can uh, use as pickup points. Because don't forget, every single one of our conversions is bolt in and fully reversible not a single hole is drilled or a bracket welded onto these cars now Mauser Electronics has the widest selection of semiconductors and electronic components and it's fair to say we get a lot of stuff from them including all of the connectors like the high voltage and low voltage connectors that you see on cars like the Triumph over there but that's only half the story the most important element of these connectors is this lot in front of me. And this is a small selection of the crimpers that we use when we are making the connectors up themselves. So you've got connectors like Molex crimpers, for instance. There's a number of different types of crimps that we use on those type of plugs. And these three here are some of the crimpers that we use. And I can't stress this enough. It's really essential that you use the right crimpers for the right crimps. I've seen a number of times on DIY conversions and some other conversions where people just haven't invested in the correct tools. Now, that might work for a little bit, but over time, that connection, that crimp is gonna fail. So, simply essential that you buy the right crimp tools for the right crimps. And as I say, we get all the crimpers and the crimps themselves on reels, in our case, from Mauser Electronics. Right, so in the rear is where we've got the rest of the bits and pieces. So we've got the remainder of the battery pack in here. So that's a 30 kilowatt hour total battery pack. Um, range wise, that's probably estimating 100 miles, something like that, I reckon, driving normally. And 
as usual, everything has to be bolted in, so all the holes that mount everything here are existing on the vehicle already. Uh, you've got the seven kilowatt charger in here. Uh, you've got your low voltage fuses and relays over here. There's a BMS panel uh, there, just a screen. I should state that um, we're gonna have a carpeted board here to protect everything because you know if somebody's throwing in luggage in here you don't want anything here getting damaged so there'll be a, a panel here when we're finished you got your high voltage uh, service disconnect there and over on that side is something else i want to talk about now the keen eyed amongst you is probably wondering why have i put the charge socket in the boot well there's a simple answer to that and that is there's nowhere on the outside of the vehicle to put it the old fuel filler hole which is here was simply too too small um, so we put it in there and yes that's going to mean that the boot has to be slightly open to charge up overnight but this car uh, the owner is going to be using it primarily at home or around uh, home not going to really be doing long distance journeys in it and charging too much out in the wild and in public anyway so that works for him which works for us and most importantly that means that we don't then have to cut a bigger hole or grind out the original uh, fuel filler hole to make it bigger which you know is something i really don't want to do um, but on that note come around here and have a look at this tim but that solution left us with one small problem which was there was a hole here where the fuel filler used to be but you know after a bit of head scratching I came up with the idea of putting our badge there because our badge is exactly the right size for the hole. And I think it really just works with the chrome work as well. So that's how we filled the fuel for the hole. Now interior wise, as with pretty much all of our builds, it's just stock looking really. Uh, dials are all the same, switches are all the same. Um, we've still got the gears obviously because the Hyper 9 motor is bolted to the original gearbox. Now underneath the carpet here, we had a little bit of a challenge um, ahead of us at the start because we need to obviously get cables from front to back because there's a battery pack and charger and bits and pieces in the rear. And obviously the motor and other battery pack is in the front. And you need cables to link all that together. Now there's no easy way on a lot of cars, and this was one of them, to get cables front to back. You can't really go underneath. It's not really safe to have cables going underneath the floor pan. Um, definitely can't go through the uh, tunnel because that's where the prop is spinning around and you really don't want cables next to something like the prop is spinning around at such high revolutions. So what we ended up doing is making it our own cable tray system that went from the front of the vehicle inside along the tunnel and then to the rear. So there's a cable tray underneath the carpet. Um, but apart from that, uh, which you can't obviously see, everything looks the same. Speedo, uh, rev counters obviously now linked to the revs of the motor. Uh, fuel gauge is now obviously uh, been repurposed for the battery state of charge. Um, so this vehicle is moving and working. We're not going to take it out for a spin today because there's still some little bits and pieces the guys need to do to be able to get it road legal. We're waiting on the uh, wing mirrors, for instance, and we can get it MOT'd. But pre-vehicle uh, testing uh, tests, if you like, have been done. So I am allowed to at least move it today. So one thing I do want to do is get it on the scales because the original car was 940 kilos and we yet to corner weight it to see where we've ended up because the target weight is always the same as the original vehicle. So let's do that. Bit more, bit more. Right. So this car came into us pre-restored without an engine in. So we couldn't do the usual corner weights that we do when a vehicle normally comes in. But I do know that they originally were 940 kilos. I just don't know what the weight distribution was. And now, <laughs> pretty much spot on, 941 kilos. Uh, weight distribution wise looks, I reckon it's better because I would have expected it to be quite front biased originally. Uh, and quite light on the rear and now we've got a be better weight distribution so I have a feeling this is going to handle better but there's only one way to find out and I can't really do that yet but I am going to have a little cheeky drive around the car park I quite like this I'll tell you what I want to test this apparently 
Triumph Heralds and Vitesses have a very famous tight turning circle. That's right, because of the lifting bonnet, they had far more. Do you reckon it will make it round here? That's one way right. to find out. Oh, that's insane. <laughs> that's insane. It turns on the six months. Tell you what, this would make a good London taxi, wouldn't it? Look at that. Wow, I'm impressed with that. Can't wait to get to That is impressive, because that's pretty much just around where I'm standing. It, well, you can see by the lines on the road. Normally when I'm doing this, I'm smoking the rear tyres and doing <laughs> a donut like Oh, that's quite impressive. I really like that. How was it? Good? <laughs> yeah. Surprisingly cool. uh, nice. I mean, we need to do some proper test driving now, but yeah, first impressions are actually really good. So there we go. I've had a little bit of a taster, like a starter of driving the Vitesse, but now at the main course, I need to get test driving this vehicle. So we need to get the mirrors on, the suspension needs to settle as well, because all the suspension and bushes and everything are brand new as well. But so far, I'm really impressed by it. The last time this car was on the road though, can you believe it, was the 1980s. So it's been a long time coming, but what a comeback. I mean, beautifully restored and electric, Welcome to the 21st century. Thank you as well to Mauser Electronics for sponsoring this episode. And don't forget to go to mauser.com for all your electronic components needs. And on that note, I hope you enjoyed this episode and we'll see you on the next one.